<laughs> Good evening. We'll call this regular session of the Fairborn City Schools Board of Education to order. And tonight we have our junior ROTC cadets to present colors. So should well please rise for the presentation of colors. Be seated. Mr. Philo, please call the roll. Mr. Andrew Wilson. Here. Mr. Jerry Browning. Here. Mr. Pat McCourt. Mrs. Katie Millad. Here. Ms. Mary Reister. Here. I'd like to, uh, to add that Mr. McCourt is recovering from open heart surgery, a quintuple bypass operation, and he uh, just returned home on uh, Sunday. So. Okay, a motion to approve the agenda as presented. So moved. Thank you, Ms. Reister. Second. Thank you, Mr. Browning. Mr. Philo? Ms. Reister. Yes. Mr. Browning. Yes. Mrs. Millad. Yes. Mr. Wilson. Yes. Motion carries. I have a motion to approve the minutes of the Thursday, February 17th regular board meeting. So moved. Thank you, Mrs. Millad. Second. Thank you, Ms. Reister. Mrs. Millad. Yes. Mrs. Reister. Yes. Mr. Browning. Yes. Mr. Wilson. Yes. Motion carries. Move on to board member reports and good of the order. We'll start with Mrs. Millad tonight. Oh. Surprise. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, just a few things that um, have happened since the last meeting. I want to congratulate Sue Brackenhoff and her team for putting together such an excellent in-service day last Friday for our teachers to attend and um, had a lovely time at the Baker and um, Fairborn High School choir concert. It was a nice time for the eighth graders to get a chance to perform with the high school for next year. It was a, a good time. So um, two good events in the past couple weeks. Okay. Ms. Reister. Um, well, the Fairborn High School musical was excellent as always. Uh, so if you didn't see that, you totally missed out. Um, it is Read Across America Week. So I just want to say thank you to Mike Foy, um, the new SRO, Wesley Frederick. And tomorrow, Rob Anderson, the city manager, um, will either have had or will have read to Miss Ingalls second grade class. Um, I did that as well. A uh, lot of fun. Reminded me uh, why I'm not a teacher. You guys <laughs> that are educators are saints. Um, but it was a lot of fun. Some some really cool little kids out there. Uh, Fairborn night at Wright State University. Uh, just want to point out that we had over 600 tickets sold under Fairborn versus uh, Beaver Creek night, which had just a little over 50. So that was awesome. Ha ha, <laughs> Beaver Creek. <laughs> um, this is recorded. That's okay, that's okay. I'll take it. Um, spaghetti dinner at Giovanni's uh, was great for put, care, uh, put Fairborn kids first. Um, and then today I popped into the shoes for the shoeless event at Baker Middle School and I gotta tell you it got me in all the feels um, it was it was a great event um, really kind of put a lot of things into perspective and just reminded me how much we take for granted so mm -hmm. um, and then last but not least uh, staff and student of the quarter uh, was great as always 
we, um, you know, we always love honoring those who kind of stand out, but I do want to take a minute to say that we have so many uh, administrators and teachers and students that may not necessarily get recognized on stage, but we have a lot of great people in our district. Mm -hmm. And that's it. Okay, Mr. Browning. Okay. Uh, winter sports just ended, and I wanted to congratulate uh, Evelyn Oktovic and uh, Sean Monroe. Both achieved 1,000 points in their career, which is a huge, huge achievement. Uh, the indoor drum line and winter guard are both still performing. I've been to quite a few of their performances, and uh, both are doing well. The winter guard has gotten a number of first place and a second place this year so far. Uh, the musical, went to the musical, and just... The, the talent level of the kids in our district, when you see them in those kind of events, to me is unbelievable year after year. Uh, this past week was the Choral Spectacular, and uh, same thing, and that has a neat format because it has eighth grade through 12th, so it gives the eighth graders a chance to see what it's gonna be like when they're in high school and what they can you know, aspire to achieve. Um, next Wednesday is the Meet the Coach Night for the new football coach. It's in the Commons at six o'clock, so Anybody that's interested uh, can come. It's the 12th, and uh, come meet everybody. I said Wednesday. I Actually, it's Tuesday on the 12th. Um, but come meet the new football coach. And then uh, also on the 12th is the Strings concert, and then a week later is the uh, band concert. So look forward to everybody coming to those. Okay. Now I'll, I'll echo the comments on, on the musical. It's always a, a great event to, to go see. Uh, and there are so many parents and community members that help out on that as well as the faculty members. So a big thank you to those in the community who help uh, put that on. Uh, attended two, uh, two new schools to take a look at uh, new high schools and what's being done in new construction in, in high schools, uh, one of which had only been open for a week. Uh, and they were kind enough to let us uh, go in and, and look around their school. So it's uh, interesting to see what's being done at, at that level now. Uh, the professional development day last Friday was, was absolutely amazing. There were so many things going on. I don't know how anybody decided what to go to. I, I just popped in on a couple of things as I caught them walking through the hallway. Um, attended a Rotary meeting where Mr. Lally presented the abbreviated version of the state of the schools to the Rotarians of the community. That was uh, well received. And uh, also the student and staff of the quarter was a, a great event. So uh, that's, that's it. We'll, uh, Mr. We'll Wilson? Yes. Can, uh, I'm supposed to deliver a message on behalf of Mr. McCourt. Okay. Uh, he asked that, I uh, that he extends his heartfelt thank you uh, to all of you, to the entire staff throughout the district, administrators, other board members, uh, for all the cards and the prayers and the meals that uh, he and his wife Donna have received. As uh, Mr. Uh, Wilson mentioned, he had open heart surgery a week ago this past Monday. Uh, every day that, uh, that I have talked to him, he seems to be getting stronger and stronger, and hopefully uh, he will be sitting right here with his great sense of humor uh, in the month of April. So uh, he just wanted me to pass that along and to say thank you to everyone. Okay. Thank you. And we'll move on to uh, recognition of visitors. If there's anyone that wishes to uh, address the board, please state your name and address. Uh, step up to the, to the microphone over there. Limit your comments to five minutes. <laughs> Over there. Well, as the liaison to the city council, I have some news about some things that you may not know that are happening in our city. Uh, number one, uh, Cohatch is a new um, business entity that uh, is where the old Rouch's restaurant used to be. Um, it was um, called the Kitchen Incubator, and they are going to be that plus more workspaces that people can come in. They have two uh, of those in the Columbus area. We visited those. Um, back a couple of mon months ago we closed on the uh, business uh, transferring the business to them 
and I think it'll be an exciting place here. Uh, it will get a lot more people working into uh, Fairborn there and give l opportunities for people just study starting out businesses. Um, one of the things, they are going to have that whole block and where the ice cream place and the hibachi grill or whatever it was, um, that is, uh, they have plans to do a retail restaurant um, and they are going to be doing all of that. Um, number two, uh, St. Patrick's Day. Flanagan's is a, um, was a nightclub down uh, near UD and they had a big, uh, always had a big St. Patrick's Day um, celebration and they sold, the owners sold it and the new owners did not want to do that anymore. And for some reason, um, we came up um, and, and we're going to host it this year. It is on a Sunday, uh, but we're still uh, going to have it take place. There will be uh, three tents, a large tent on the um, street in front of um, where the Fifth Third Bank used to be, and then two smaller tents on the uh, parking lot there. There will be um, adult beverages, and there will also be food trucks and other kinds of beverages. Um, so they will have Lyft and Uber um, drivers available to uh, take people home if they wish. Um, another thing that's happened in, in Fairborn, Tangible Solutions, which is a digital manufacturing um, plant uh, or business, uh, which makes um, um, 3D printing and um, bones to uh, take when people have operations that they make the bones and they fit exactly to the person who needs the uh, bone spinal columns and that kind of thing. They are expanding and uh, that's good news. And the last thing is um, the Friends of the Fairborn Library uh, wanted to explore the um, possibility of doing the little free libraries. You may have seen them in other communities where they have um, um, the little houses and um, books are available there and you can take a book and you can leave a book. Um, there were no ordinances about having those. Uh, so all, as long as they don't block the view of any driveways or anything like that. Um, so we are working. Uh, I've gotten permission from uh, Mr. Deskins to contact um, the um, carpentry teacher there, uh, Mr. Tyler, I believe is his name. Um, and we have t uh, communicated and he's excited about having um, the uh, students do some of those buildings, their kits, and uh, so we will be trying to get some donations. Uh, the parks um, is, uh, Alicia Eckhart, the director, says uh, we're free to put them in the parks. Uh, Mr. Lally has said we can put them on, on some of the campuses here. Um, in the school district. So um, we are just trying to get it together and you may see some of those popping up. We have um, a young man who works for the Green County Library um, who has these, he's done several of these uh, houses and he says his whole garage has lots of books and he has plenty to put in them. So <laughs> uh, it's an exciting adventure and hopefully we'll have it going sometime this year, maybe next year if not. Okay. Thank, Thank you, Donna. Thank you, Councilwoman Wilson. <laughs> <laughs> We'll move on to school district presentations. Mr. Lawley. Okay, here tonight is Mr. Mike Eaker from the Greene County Career Center for an update. Thank you, Mr. Mr. President, uh, members of the board. Um, as uh, anybody that goes out uh, 68 south of the city past uh, uh, 35, they'll notice that there's some uh, dirt being moved. That is for our new facility. They've broken ground. They're putting in the peering. 
and hoping uh, to get uh, uh, the, the, the pad uh, completed this month. In order to do that, we actually had to have a bond sale. As you recall, we, we were successful in the, uh, in the $62 million uh, levy that was passed, but you got to sell the bonds. Well, it turns out that due to uh, uh, the hard work of our superintendent and treasurer, and uh, we, uh, we received a AA2 credit rating, which is the fourth highest in the state for career centers. Um, and also because of the fact that we had about $18 million on hand for facilities, uh, and the and the hard as I say the hard work the the, the fact that both the the president or the both the superintendent and the treasurer carried the flag both up to Chicago to get the credit rating and then out to St. Louis to sell the bonds we did okay that's why I'm I'm so happy to report that that um, it looks like uh, uh, they estimated our our good you know, auditor down in Xenia estimated that that the uh, interest for this loan was going to be 3.5 percent. Well, the bond sale went so well with that AA2 uh, rating that um, we received about $200 million worth of bids on $62 million worth of bonds. <laughs> Bottom line was that that 3.5 percent estimated interest went down to 3.19 percent. For all you taxpayers out there, and just for Mr. Philo's edification, uh, <laughs> that's going to save uh, the county about $432,000 over the uh, life of the bond, which is more than I make in a year. Uh, the, uh, the, the, the uh, millage that we went out for was 1.03 mills. Turns out that uh, as a result of the successful bond sales, it be 1.023. Uh, I'm kind of happy. Uh, anyway, another bit of, of news, we just, uh, the Career Center uh, successfully concluded negotiations with our, on, uh, for three-year contracts with both of our unions. Significantly, we did it without any help from any lawyers, which is a first for us. <laughs> um, because of that, it took a lot less time, and uh, I think that uh, the fact that we successfully did it indicates the change of climate. Uh, and the increase in trust on both sides. So we're going to have uh, new three-year contracts starting in, in July that uh, uh, everybody thinks are pretty fair and equitable. One other thing, I got a chance to uh, get a briefing from the uh, Vice Wing Commander at the Springfield Air National Guard Base, and I'm just glad that the, 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 I picked the day that the ROTC students are here. Um, you know, Springfield Guard flies, uh, they fly drones. Specifically, they fly Reapers. If you go up there, you'll find out there are no Reapers in Springfield. The missions that they fly are all overseas, are all in the uh, area of, uh, in, somewhere in the Middle East, highly classified. They have all the facilities to do that at Springfield, and it, it, it's really cool. Their, their command, uh, the vice commander is uh, Colonel Kim Fitzgerald. She uh, started out as an enlisted person, then became a, an officer and a navigator, and then she became a, an Air Force pilot, and now she flies drones for a living. Um, they're not really called drones anymore. They're called RPAs, Remote Piloted uh, uh, Air Vehicles or Airplane. And uh, the difference being that drones are basically guided bombs, so they blow themselves up, whereas these Reapers carry uh, and can be, uh, carry their own weapons and can be reused. Um, as I said, uh, the, uh, the training, the, actually the training to fly these things was done out at Creech Air Force Base, which is in, uh, near Indian Springs, uh, Nevada, which is somewhere north and west of, of Las Vegas. Um, but when, as, soon as, as soon as they get finished with their training, they come back here, they go right into, uh, in, into actual operational missions. And the missions include Overwatch, which essentially is, uh, uh, is they fly protective air cover over uh, all of the convoys that are, that are moving equipment uh, throughout the area, supporting uh, our allies and our own forces. They also fly reconnaissance missions and various intelligence uh, missions. And those are flown daily. And one point that she liked to that she liked to tell us was that 
that they, uh, that her, her outfit, her wing, inflicted more lethal damage in 2018 than in the entire previous history of that Air National Guard unit at Springfield, despite the fact that they used to fly fighters. They flew them from starting in World War II all the way up until they switched over to the Reaper. Um, one other mission that they fly, or they call geospatial, another way of saying they look at, through cameras at what's going on. They do that, to, and that, they do that in the states to, uh, uh, to survey flood and, and tornado damage. So I wouldn't be a bit surprised if they, uh, to find out that, that some of the, the damage assessment that was done on the latest uh, round of tornadoes down in Alabama, done by our good folks out at Springfield. So the real reason I'm glad you're here is they are seeking uh, pilots, intel, geospatial, and support technicians. So if you're looking for a career, they have lots of jobs out there, um, and they're for both enlisted and officer, so, and, and for enlisted who want to become officers. So if you get an inkling you want to do that, you might look into it. And, the, and if you get a chance, I, Major, if I were you, I would try to get uh, Colonel Fitzgerald to come down and, and give you a talk if you get a chance. She is very, very good at what she does, and she likes to talk about it. So with that, if there are, if there are, are there any questions? No? Thank Just you. Congratulations yeah. on getting your building going. <laughs> Every five years, ROTC programs have to go through a five-year assessment. Here to update us on that assessment tonight is Principal Amy Gayhart. Good evening. Um, I would like to ask that Major Eric Frixens and Sergeant Chuck Mustin come and join me up front. These two gentlemen lead our junior ROTC program at Fairborn High School, and um, I want to compliment them and congratulate them that on January 22nd, they went through a very rigorous, comprehensive um, five-year inspection in which they came out with flying colors. Sergeant Mustin is in his first year with the district and Major Frickson's is only in his second year with the district. So this was a new experience for them, at least with us here at Fairborn High School. And I can tell you that the inspector looks at everything. He starts out the morning with an inspection of the whole group. He looks at their uniform inventory, their online databases, their um, curriculum processes and procedures. Uh, he, he puts them through the, the whole, the whole getup. And they did an excellent job. We received a great deal of positive feedback um, as a result of that inspection. And I just want to, again, congratulate them, thank them for the work that they do with our junior ROTC program and with our cadets. We are very proud of our cadets at Fairborn High School. They put in literally thousands of hours of um, community service on their own time in the evening, on the weekends, in the summers. They provide the color guard for almost all of our events and and they um, go out to community events and provide color guard um, for those opportunities as well. So we appreciate these gentlemen, and we just wanted to take the chance to say good job. Again, congratulations to our ROTC program and their leadership. Yes, well done, everyone. What a difference a month makes. If you have driven by the primary school, you probably have noticed that a huge wall is going up. That <laughs> wall that you see is the East Gymnasium Wall. In the next two weeks, the goal is I think you'll see the North Wall is going up and the West Wall is going up. Uh, so we are making progress over there in spite of the weather. Uh, Monarch Construction keeps plugging along, and um, it's get, getting very exciting. The intermediate, we continue to meet on that weekly, although uh, even though we have weekly meetings set up, tomorrow morning's meeting is canceled due to the weather because uh, a lot of those people come from Cincinnati and Columbus. So uh, with the weather coming in at about 3, 4 in the morning, uh, we thought it best that we cancel tomorrow's meeting, but uh, we'll pick that back up next week. But everything is scheduled for the next two, three weeks, 
two, three weeks out as to what the goals are to accomplish over at the primary. So um, with spring coming, uh, next month, by the time we get here to the board meeting, you're going to see a, another big difference. So we're excited about that. Okay. Any questions on the construction project? Okay. Uh, just there was a big difference in just a week in yes. my, in my, uh, my tutoring uh, up there at the primary school. We could just barely see the walls a week ago, just yeah. a few levels of, of concrete. And this week it was, it looked like a wall with window <laughs> and doors. And yeah. Okay. A couple of weeks ago, the administrative team for Fairborn City Schools, along with a couple of board members, interviewed uh, a couple of architectural firm for um, selecting and design build firm for future projects. Uh, it was a very tedious pro uh, process. Uh, we weighed a lot of different things between the two that it came down to, the two architectural firms. and. Uh, I have told the board that I've decided that we are going to go with uh, S&P, that's Steed, Hammond and Paul architectural firm. That is the firm that's currently doing our primary and will do our intermediate. So um, we will meet with them on Monday to discuss what our needs might be for going forward and um, establishing a vision as we, as, as I said, as we move forward. So at next month meeting, um, I will have a proposal uh, for board approval to go forward with uh, Steed, Hammond, and Paul. Okay. And that uh, concludes the uh, superintendent's report. Okay. Okay. Um, before we uh, move along to the to the meat of the uh, board. Uh, regular board meeting here if there's uh, because it's just a matter of uh, voting on on various items and things uh, you're welcome to stay and listen to that if you'd like but if you're also uh, free to uh, okay. free to go if you uh, this so is your choose. chance to escape <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> escape now <laughs> thank you for being here tonight ladies and gentlemen Okay, we'll move on to item nine, the budget and finance uh, recommendations. May I have a motion? So moved. Thank you, Mr. Browning. Second. Thank you, Ms. Reister. Any questions, comments on these items? No. Okay. Mr. Philo? Mr. Browning? Yes. Ms. Reister? Yes. Mrs. Millad? Yes. Mr. Wilson? Yes. Motion carries. Uh, item 10, administrative reports and superintendent recommendations, which runs through page 5. And there will be a section here uh, for some reading of gifts and donations, but may I have a motion? So moved. Thank you, Ms. Reister. Second. Thank you, Mrs. Millad. And Ms. Reister, you handle the honors on uh, item, item D on page 5. Yes. We would like to gratefully accept the following gifts and or donations. Uh, Kevin Ackerman, $100 for the Ackerman Relays. Jack and Judy Gayhart, $100 for the Ackerman Relays. Chris and Pam Gayhart, Kirk and Amy Gayhart, and Carrie and Scott Wolver, $100. Okay. And we, we thank you for those uh, donations to that event. Mr. Philo? Mrs. Ms. Reister? Yes. Mrs. Millad? Yes. Mr. Browning? Yes. Mr. Wilson? Yes. Motion carries. Item 11, uh, acknowledgement of contributions for uh, that benefit Fairborn City Schools. All right. All of these are for the mm -hmm. Hall of Honor. We have Ann Armstrong Inglesbury, $25. Captain and Mrs. Matt Arnold, $50. William Arnold, $50. Ron Russell and Kathy Barber, $100.
Mr. and Mrs. Robert DePiro, $50. Jane Clifton and Family, $100. Joan Dottel, $100. Jean Fisher, $50. Michael Foy, $50. Francis Gideon, $100. Barbara Harshman, $250. William Hayden, $50. Dr. John Hobbs and Judy Hobbs, $50. Dr. David Coker from Town and Country Animal Clinic, $250. Bruce Lamar, $50. David, Allen, and William Neebs, $100. C. Wright Penson, $500. Rosie Root, $25. Uh, James Saunders, $50. Michael Saylor, $1,000. Uh, Timothy Spar, uh, $100. The Spar family, $50. Steve and Sue Wolliver, $50. Okay. And that's it. All right. Great, great to see those, uh, the support we get for the Hall of Honor cool. event. So, item 12, executive item, session. Item 12 is recommended uh, to move into executive session for the specified purpose of the appointment, employment, or compensation of public employees. Is there a motion? So moved. Thank you, Mr. Browning. Second. Thank you, Ms. Reister. And uh, no action is expected. No. So, uh, so the only thing we'll be doing after coming out of executive session is adjourning the meeting. Well, we'll have a brief work session and adjourning the meeting. So if uh, the rest of you want to want to leave, please feel free. So, Mr. Browning. Yes. Ms. Reister? Yes. Mrs. Millard? Yes. Mr. Wilson? Yes. Motion carries. We are now in executive session.